welcome to your outlet for outdoors and Western lifestyle news, The Ben Show. I am your host, Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Beck. As always, we love hearing from you, all your comments, stories, and ideas. Get a hold of us anytime by calling or texting 305-900-2363. Again, that's 305 900 2363, or you can always drop an email to bendradioshow at gmail.com. Riding along shotgun, as always, is my producer, sound engineer, and co host, Jeff Tigger Earhart. Now, yes, we are up upon Thanksgiving. It's only a few days away. But what also has Tigger and I excited is that we are about to be Las Vegas bound. Sin City, baby. That's right. The Wrangler National Finals Rodeo, the NFR, is going to quickly be upon us. It's kicking off already on December 7th. However, Tigger and I are going to be there already a few days prior. Like we always are. Yes, we have a PRCA convention that goes on, which is so much fun because a lot of folks don't see what goes on behind the chutes. Behind the scenes, you see what I'm saying? When I, it comes see what, to rodeo? I see what you did there. And it's a great time for all of us to get together, network, and figure out what our plan of action is going to be for this next upcoming season of rodeo. But I want to bring this up about the NFR in case you've never gone to Vegas during the NFR. That city goes country. It's unbelievable. We are talking cowboy Christmas is going on in multiple different convention venues across the city. Plus, on top of that and the great rodeo action itself, there's also country artists going on and performing throughout the city. You know when you talk about the country artists and we always think of a Vegas. Well, you know, we talk NFR, you're thinking about crowning the world champions. I'm going to add that there are so much, so much more rodeo action going on other than the national finals. I mean, there's so much going on during that time in Vegas. But the lineup of country music artists that are going to be in Vegas for that couple of weeks, this is the deepest I've ever seen from old classic country to King George is going to be there, outlaw country, red dirt country, whatever your genre of country music, the artists are going to be there. I guarantee almost anyone you're listening to currently and really digging right now when you listen to your music, check it out. I have a feeling they're going to be there in Vegas sometime during the NFR. So we've got King George. We've got Carrie Underwood. We've got Miranda Lambert, Laney Wilson, Cody Jinks. Even Kid Rock is going to show up in Ned, Vegas. Ned Ledoux is going to be there yes. as well. Chris Ledoux's son. If you have never seen Led, Ned Ledoux, you have to take in a Ned Ledoux concert. So there you have it. If you're heading to Vegas, have a great time. And if not, put it on your list for next year. Our top news story, outdoor enthusiasts, especially those hunters and anglers in the Northwest, they will soon have access to 15,500 plus acres of public land in eastern Oregon. The acquisition of the Minam River Wildlife Area was highlighted in a recent press release from the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, which worked with state federal and private partners to bring the land under public ownership. When combined with the neighboring Eagle Cap Wilderness and the Minam State Recreation Area, the acquisition stitches together a block of public land that's larger than Yellowstone National Park. It will also improve hunting access to an additional 6,000 acres of land owned by the U.S. Forest Service and the Bureau of Land Management. Hunters, anglers, and all other users will be able to access the Minam River Wildlife Area from April 1st to November 30th. It will remain closed to the public for the rest of the year. While this closure will put the area off limits for any late season hunting and fishing, it's meant to protect big game on their wintering range. A grand opening celebration is currently slated for June 2024. Now we head to Florida, where I am not exactly excited about this record python that was caught. A massive 17-foot, 198-pound Burmese python was recently captured in South Florida. The nearly 200-pound python is the second largest snake ever caught in the state. The python was caught during a cold front, making it even more unusual as snakes typically remain sedentary, you know, during colder temperatures. So that's one of those situations where it was probably a pet or something and somebody turned it loose. Assumably, I, don't know. I mean, because it's yeah. not like there's a python season. 
Exactly, exactly. But you know, well, uh, they regardless, you know what? Pythons, there's way too many of them in Florida. I don't like hearing that they are getting bigger and bigger. You're just not a fan of snakes. No. Nope. You know what? I have rattlesnake boots that are custom made. And I hate them. And you don't even like those. Nope, I don't. Nope, I don't. Changing gears. 41 states have filed a lawsuit against Facebook and Instagram. They are accusing them of intentionally trying to make kids addicted to their platforms. The lawsuit alleges that Facebook collects data on children under 13 years of age without parental consent. The states also claim that Facebook algorithms are designed to hook children with features like the infinite scroll. You know what? I got to say, I'm glad this is coming to light. We keep saying, let's get kids outdoors. We understand. Let's just get kids off the electronics in front of the screens. Not just kids, but everybody. Well, think about it. Adults included. They're saying kids addicted. Let's be real. All ages are addicted to these platforms. We do the same darn thing. It doesn't matter if we're looking at cows, if we're looking at this and that. It doesn't matter. I mean, we're we're all, because it's convenient, right? It is. It's just this little entertainment device that's in our hands. So there, I'm going to say, put down the phone and, and pick up a piece of paper. Pick up, pick up the binoculars, okay? That's what you should do. Pick up the binoculars and gift those kids a set of binoculars for <laughs> Spy on for the neighbors. Christmas. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> there you go. All right. While we're talking, though, apps and our phones, love is in the air. Most Hookups end up happening over the holidays, so I got to bring this one up about Tinder, which is a dating oh app. Oh, my god! For those that don't know what Tinder is. You're going from snakes to Tinder to hookups. <laughs> this is random. That's why this show this is, is called is The Bed. You okay. never know what's coming around this The Bed. True. This is true. You All got right. to say this. All right. Here we go. Tinder. All of you that have been using the dating app or thinking about trying it out, they have launched a new feature called Matchmaker. It allows a member's friends and family members to pick potential partners for them. The users, though, get to review the dating candidates and suggested that have been suggested by their loved ones. And they have the final say on who they like. Swipe left, swipe right. You know what I'm talking about. But uh, I think this is hilarious. This is a disaster. Really? This is a disaster waiting to happen. Let me explain why. So let's say I'm trying to help your cousin your cousin out or something, right? And trying to help them find love. So I can swipe left or swipe right, right, excuse me, for them. But what's going to happen when you come in and I'm on Tinder and I'm just trying to help out your cousin, that's not going to go over very well. Okay, that's a great point. This is a disaster waiting to happen. If you're going to sign up and allow your friends and family members to be matchmakers on your Tinder profile, because I can see the use of this. Maybe you have an individual family friend in your life who has failed a lot of relationships and you're like, you know what? You guys just pick somebody for me because apparently I can't pick the right person. Well, don't do it well, on that. You're, you're fixing to get a lot of people in trouble with this. I'm back. just saying before you ask your friends and family, make sure that both spouses, if they are married, What, know, sign a prenup? Is that exactly what you're trying to do? That Good. They're helping you out with your dating profile. I'm, so, I'm sorry, dear. I'm against this one. <laughs> All right. I have one last thing for y'all and this one is on a better note. Okay, a university has revealed that soaking in a hot tub may produce the same health benefits as going for a half hour jog. There, is that better, Tigger? Duh. Only because I've been hinting that I want a hot tub for the last how long? A hot tub and a goat. I'm not asking for much, all right? Well, these researchers had dozens of study participants soak for 30 minutes a day in a hot tub. The participants experience major boosts in cardiovascular levels that were comparable to running. See, Tigger, I need one of these. Blood flow to their legs increased by 345%, while average heart rates shot up by 31 beats per minute. The participants' blood pressure also dropped significantly. And researchers found that a hot tub posed excellent benefits to both physical and mental health as the relaxation feeling of a hot tub is something enjoyable, which makes the use of a hot tub even more desirable for improving health. So which hot tub company is uh, sponsoring this segment? No comment. Mm -hmm. (laughs) All right. We covered lots of topics, but we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're talking about how to improve that gamey taste of venison. Stay where you are. We'll be right back.
Are the Florida Keys calling your name? Have you dreamed of catching exotic mahi-mahi, red snapper, sailfish, grouper? Blue Water Girl Charters can fulfill your dreams of saltwater fishing excitement. Book today, full or half-day charters. Let Blue Water Girl Charters make your dreams a reality. Blue Water Girl Charters, follow on Facebook for booking and more information. Blue Water Girl Charters, catch dinner and memories. You've waited, dreamt of a hunting adventure, and now have harvested that trophy of a lifetime. Keep the memory alive with a custom-designed mount preserved as a work of art. Check out our approved taxidermist, depending on your location. The award-winning Schneider Taxidermy is located in Helena, Montana. When hunting the Dakotas, JB's Wildlife Designs in Mandan, North Dakota. Then Shadron Creek Taxidermy in Nebraska. And for the Central USA, Little Rack Taxidermy in Macomb, Illinois. Reach out to The Ben Show and let us help you find the right taxidermist. This is Beck. First, I appreciate all of you for listening and making The Bend part of your week. Many of you have asked, how do I catch past episodes? The answer is super easy. Head to thebendshow.com and click on the shows tab. There you can listen to every episode all the way back to episode one. Podcasters, head to your favorite podcasting app and search The Bend. You'll find us. Be sure to follow and subscribe and never miss another episode again. Welcome to your outlet for outdoors and Western lifestyle, The Ben Show. I am your host, Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Beck, and ride shotgun along as always my co-host, Jeff Tigger Earhart. Now, hunting season, yes, we've harvested our deer, elk, or moose, and now we're wondering how to prepare that venison without so much of the gamey taste. Because let's be real, a lot of times around the dinner table, at least I've had this happen to me before, where if I didn't prepare it correctly, I had somebody go and say, oh, sorry, I didn't really like it. it they tastes- crinkle their nose a yeah, little bit, right? They, yeah, they, there's a different smell. There's a different taste. The wild taste. You know what I'm talking about. It can about. get a little tricky to prepare. Exactly. But I thought, first of all, I'd reflect on... What causes that wild or gamey taste in the first place in venison? And sometimes we don't even think about it, but have you ever realized it all depends essentially on what those animals have eaten? Their For diet. example, whitetails, they hang out in a lot of cornfields, right? So sometimes you can joke that your whitetail has been corn fed, like beef or corn fed, but think about it. It equals out to the whitetails having a tamer taste. They're not tasting quite as gamey as, say, a mule deer where they're living in rougher terrain and often they're consuming a lot of sage. You know, antelope is the same thing. Just, I mean, the natural habitat of antelope, you know, they tend to be kind of sagey. Yes. People will say that. They can be kind of sagey and stinky sometimes. There you go. There you go. So now you kind of know what kind of starts out why those different venisons might already have that taste that ends up sometimes being a battle for us when we go to prepare it. Uh, Other things that you can think about, though, if you haven't harvested your deer yet and you're going out, though, there are some things you can do that can improve as, for example, when you're skinning out your deer, removing the fat, the connective tissue, the silver skin, bone and hair during processing, it actually lessens the gamey taste. And then also what can lead to stronger flavors is say, for example, if you didn't adequately get it bled out, uh, maybe you had to delay in your field dressing or you failed to cool down the carcass quickly, those do add to how that meat may result in tasting. What I've found a lot in hunting parties is hunting deer especially, or we can throw elk and moose in that, it's actually two stages. One is the hunt, and then two is actually dressing your animal, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so everybody can learn about, you know, how to hunt, and you do this, buy all the camo and all this fancy stuff. I always recommend if people are new to it, have somebody experienced with you that knows how to field dress that animal. Uh, Talk to your taxidermist before you go out there hunting so you know how to go and do this. And I guarantee uh, there's a million people that would be willing to help you out and say, yes, I will be more than willing to help you field dress that first one that's out there. You're absolutely correct, Tigger. That's the thing that I love about hunting big game is that everybody is 
absolutely wanting to share their knowledge. You can learn a lot from YouTube videos, but until you are actually out in the field, in the middle of it, it is a whole new Hands world. Hands-on experience, right? So yes, rely on those folks that have been there and done that and do. Find yourself a mentor. It's really important. And they might have some little tricks. Exactly. Some little tricks that, that we didn't know. It's always good to have those people to rely on and lean on, I should say. Here's my next little thing. You've already harvested your meat. You've had it cooled. You've done what you're going to do. But now it's time to start preparing it as a meal for your family and friends. And to aid in getting rid of or improve that gamey taste of venison, here's some ideas that I have. One of them, and it's easy, tenderize, meaning just pound that meat with your tenderizing tool or grind it up and turn it into like a hamburger. Right. Either way, that helps right away. Another way is to add spices, cover up the gamey flavors with herbs like rosemary, thyme, or sage. That does help a lot. But bigger ones and ones that I found that are even more helpful is to rub your venison with fat. And we're not using deer fat. We're using other fats to keep the game meat from becoming too dry. So say you have a roast you want to make. Rub it with oil, butter, bacon fat, or my favorite, sour cream. It adds actually adds moisture, richness, and flavor sour to the roast. Sour cream? Yes, sour really? cream. And then cover it with, say, something real garlicky. Here is a little easy trick. Sour cream and then cover it with, say, powdered ranch dressing mix. Really? It sounds crazy. Give it a try. Another idea. Wow. These are almost no fails in my world. And it doesn't matter if you're doing venison or a beef roast that say is a lot tougher than others. Marinades. I talk about it all the time. Marinades, tenderize, they soften the muscle fibers and enhance the flavor of the venison. You know, a lot of those cuts of meat where you think that they're invaluable, or I shouldn't say invaluable, but not as uh, sought after. Mm -hmm. I got to bring up back here a little bit, y'all, because she will do that marinades and it makes those cuts of meat amazing. I mean, nothing short of amazing. And we were just talking about this the other day about how uh, venison can get real dry mm -hmm. a lot of times, mm -hmm. and it gets tricky to try to cook that. I consider myself a pretty good cook, but I struggle with that many times. So I'm all on board when you say with the marinade. So all on board on that. Here's the little trick when doing with venison. You do want to use a marinade that includes a high acid liquid. So we're talking like a lemon or tomato juice, vinegar, or wine. I like using white wine. It'll actually soften those muscle I've seen fibers. you use your white wine <laughs> Marinade. I've seen you. You this is what you know. One shot for the bird, two shots for Beck. I have seen you do this, dear. There you go. See, that's Busted. why Beck is happier in the kitchen. All right, we're gonna take a short little break, but when we come back, we're gonna go from cooking with wine to how about this? Maybe cooking with a little beer. How's that sound? The Ben Show will be back right after this. The holidays are around the corner and finding that thoughtful gift from the heart is always the goal. Well, we have the perfect idea for you. Meet author Rochelle Barrett, The Prairie Crocus. I welcome you to my world, a collection of poems, love notes, and essays about ranch life, motherhood, and life lessons from the prairie in my new book, Anthology, and 2024 Ranch Life Calendar. Order both today at prairie-crocus.com. Beautiful photos with words that speak to the heart and soul. Prairie-crocus.com, turning thoughts into writings from the heart. A perfect gift in time for the holidays. Last year, we got to meet Rob, Todd, and Jason, the crew from Wobbolo Creek Outfitters, and hear about their hunts. What can we expect on a hunt with Wobbolo Creek Outfitters? We're a family-style hunt, and most of our hunters have come back five, six, since we've opened and hunted with us every year. Book your hunt today. Head to WobboloCreekOutfitters.com. That is W-E-A-U-B-L-E-A-U, -E -E Wobbolo, located in southwest Missouri for your next turkey or whitetail hunt. Be sure to tell them Beck from the Bend sent you. The hunt is planned. The guide is booked. The trip is blocked off in the calendar. But one huge detail remains, preserving that trophy, creating a memory that will last a lifetime. Little Rack Taxidermy has that fast, friendly service to fulfill your taxidermy in a timely, professional manner. Reach out to Heather with Little Rack Taxidermy through Facebook at Little Rack Taxidermy or send an email to heatherjoe23 at hotmail.com. Little Rack Taxidermy, bringing back the natural look.
Shooting ducks, skinning bucks. I'm a hunting princess in a pickup truck. Welcome back to your outlet for outdoors and Western lifestyle, The Ben Show. I am your host, Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Beck, and Ryan Shotgun, as always, is Jeff Tigger Earhart. Now, we've all been thinking about it. Thanksgiving is just a few days away, or the holidays, as we should say, are kicked off. What are you serving, and have you thought about serving a turducken this Thanksgiving or Christmas? A turducken. Yes, yes. I know the other day I mentioned the turducken to you, Tigger, and you looked at me like I was a little bit crazy and were and kind of was like, what? I've heard that before. Is that where you a bird is stuffed in a bird? Yes, the turducken or some version of it has actually been around for centuries and it is considered a multi bird roast where you know what? You take three birds. For example, it's a various large bird stuffed with, say, a turkey. Or a goose. That would be a large bird. Then you stuff it with a pheasant or a chicken. And then you could go even smaller and then put a guinea fowl or, say, a partridge or a quail inside of it. But you aren't stuffing a bird inside of a bird. You are. So it's the skeleton and all? Or is it just the meat is maybe put into the crevice of another bird? A turducken here in the United States, just so you know, has been around since 1985. All right. A Louisiana chef, a Cajun chef made it popular. And what it is, is you take a boneless turkey. Then you stuff the boneless turkey with a boneless duck. Then you take the boneless duck and you stuff that with a boneless chicken. And but are between, they all cooked together? Yes. In between those so they're layers. Not, they're, sorry, they're not cooked already? No. So they're raw, they and you're stuffing raw. a bird into a bird into a bird. You got it. Exactly. And in, Sadistic. And in between those layers of birds, if, you get, if you're really good at this, you can stuff it with stuffing, and then the last bird, say the chicken, would be filled with the actual stuffing as well. So is this a more of a Creole-type dish? I just looked this up on our little googly machine here, and it's... Uh, it's kind of coming up in Louisiana, Cajun, Creole type food. That's this looks amazing. Who made it popular in the United States is yes, the Louisiana Cajuns. However, it it goes back to ancient Roman times, and it's actually considered very popular to be served in the United Kingdom, for example. So there you have it. A little bit of an idea, maybe if you're still kind of thinking what to serve for Thanksgiving or Christmas, and you have a whole lot of game birds in your fridge and you're wondering how could I incorporate all of these and surprise your guests think about serving a turducken this holiday season now next beer enthusiasts and bakers we need you to weigh in on this trend that's crossed my path beer being considered the perfect ingredient for richer chocolate chip cookies I'd never thought about this using beer and to be more specific they're talking about using a stout beer and chocolate chip cookie dough. They say it enhances the flavor and balances out the sweetness. Now, you can either stir the beer in or you can make a reduction, and they claim that the cookies will have a deep, rich flavor. Here's my question to y'all. Have you tried this? Do you have a tried and true baking recipe? We're all going to be starting to make, you know, Christmas cookies here in just a few weeks. So I think this could be worth the experiment. That's what I'm saying. Because we use, uh, like, Dr. Pepper. We've used that in cobblers. Yes. We've used Sprite. We've used different soda. Exactly. I'd be worth a try on this one. So I'm going to throw this to y'all. If you have a tried and true recipe and you are a thumbs up on using beer in your cookies, please send us a message and Tigger and I will give it a try in the cabin kitchen. You can email us at bendradioshow at gmail.com. What do you think of the idea of instead of beer in the cookies, it's maybe just beer and cookies? (laughs) Where maybe you don't put them together. Can you just have beer and cookies? Yes, Tigger. Just an idea. In case you it work can. Okay. You can absolutely do beer just that. Cookies. Makes sense. All right, folks. We're going to call this show wrapped. It's been a great episode as always. Thank you to my producer, sound engineer, co-host, Jeff Tigger Earhart. And yes, you can have beer with your cookies. Also, remember, folks, keep sending in your questions you might have or something spot worthy for us to share or, as we said, a recipe. It doesn't have to just be your cookie recipe. We'll try any recipe out in our cabin kitchen. Plus, we love hearing your area's field reports. That number again, you can call or text is 305-900-BEND. Again, that's 305 305- 900 
888-253-6363. Or you can always email bendradioshow at gmail.com. If you missed part of this episode or you want to hear past shows, you can find them all on the website, thebendshow.com. And be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcasting app or to The Bend Show YouTube channel. If you're looking to change things up at your next event, conference, or awards banquet, have us, Tigger and Beck, entertain your crowd. We are now booking for 2024. We are PRCA Pro Rodeo card holders, where Tigger is a pro rodeo announcer, and we are PRCA music directors, so we can take care of your event. Everything from being a public speaker to acting as a host couple to even handling your rodeo. Try to spice things up and have us entertain your crowd. Thank you to our partners, Ditelli Outdoors, The Prairie Crocus, Medora Boot and Western Wear, Blue Water Girl Charters, Buckstorm, Little Rack Taxidermy, Mickey's Mustard, ToxicCalls.com, Wablo Creek Outfitters, Atlas Tracks, RFD TV, and Wrangler. Finally, a big thanks to all of you listeners out there that came along, and whether you're coming or going today, stay with us as we ranch it up. And remember to keep up with me back all week long by following The Bend on Facebook and on Instagram at The Bend Show. This is Rebecca Warner. Catch you back if you can next week. You never know what will be coming around on The Bend. <laughs>